wellness, and I will start off with a quote. The concept of total wellness recognizes that our every thought, word, and behavior affects our greater health and well-being. And we in turn are affected not only emotionally, but also physically and spiritually. So basically, like, um, to have good wellness, you need to have a balance throughout, like, social, physical, intellectual, spiritual, all those good things. And um, so that will help improve your overall wellness. First lesson, big decision, that's what we're going to be doing today. They're going to watch a video about, um, called Big Decisions, about um, different situations students face. And then, um, let's see, then the teacher will talk about some fear situations and then they'll hand out a scenario and I'll do that later. Lesson health and well being. Um, the teacher will start off giving the students a article on obesity or any basically any topic that is relevant to today and obesity would be a good one because that's a problem. Um, and then they would go over why physical health is important to and overall wellness, and then they would create a master list on the chalkboard and then talk about that, and then have students create a fishbone model, and I have that in my lesson, an example, and then, so they would list positive areas that um, physical health would improve. Next lesson, fast food choices. I have the day before tell students to bring in a snack, and then when they walk in, they would go over the pack, the label on the package, and go over like calorie content, sugar, uh, fat, and whatever else. And then have students either get on the computers in here or go wherever, and go to the food finder and they would pick out a like a fast food from anywhere and see what um, the nutrition facts are about that. And then you could have students find something else um, to make it healthier. They would pick a new, either revise that um, meal or pick a new meal in general to find some alternative healthier meal. Lesson four, hand washing. Um, have students when they come in, this, there's this glow germ stuff you can get, and um, then they wash their hands and come back in, and there's like, you can use a black light, and it would show the spots that the students missed, and like go over common spots that students miss, such as like around the wrist and then in the cracks. And you could do this around like flu season too, that'd be a good idea. And then you could have Talk about, um, or give the article, there, it's called hand washing something, and um, it's in my lesson, sorry. <laughs> and that talks about like the different diseases that can be spread if you don't wash your hands, and then assign certain groups um, a different disease, and they would create a poster about it and present it to the class to make all the students more aware of the diseases. Lesson five, antibiotic resistance. Um, most students, some students don't even know like what they're taking. So I thought this was a good one. And they would read an article about this and then analyze it. And then students will be able to assess their own health ideas and different things from reality. My first lesson is on hearing protection. Um, students, after this lesson, they'll be able to uh, find out different things that cause problems with ears. The main activity in this lesson is going to be I'll have things that measure decibels, which is what sound is measured in. And they'll take it around the school and measure different things like hand dryer, 
I'll have like a blow dryer for that they can measure it, see how much damage turtles are doing to their ears in the morning, uh, just car noises, lawnmower noises. The second day after we do that lesson, um, hearing loss and awareness and prevention, we will take the information that we gathered from the first day and apply it to how we can protect our ears. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but band directors go deaf faster than anyone else in the world. So I'm not going to be able to hear anything in a couple of years. Don't say that. <laughs> um, and this is going to talk about different ways that you can protect yourself, like um, turning down your iPod, because when you put like the earbuds that they give you in there, it raises decibel levels by 10 decibels, which is actually quite a lot. Um, and then we'll talk about different kinds of hearing protection for when you're lawn mowing or mowing your lawn and stuff like that. Um, like over the ear kind of protection, and then the little foam ones that sometimes people use when they're on uh, hunting ranges. And then I'll even talk about musician earplugs, which are kind of similar to the foam ones, but they're specifically made for your own ear canal. Talk about sunlight and skin disorders, because um, in middle school kids are starting to worry about how they look, and some people might start doing tanning beds. And if possible, I'd like to get one of those UV cameras that takes a picture of your face and shows the damage that the sun has already done to your skin um, so that they can see what uh, damage is done, show pictures um, of people who have the beginnings of skin cancer on their face just so that they don't know what that looks like in compared to their own skin. The next lesson would be going off of that and talking about how to protect your skin with different kinds of sunscreen and uh, like facial lotions that might have sunscreen in them um, and different ideas on like, how to stay out of the sun and how um, much more intense tanning beds are than actually being in the sun because I think it's like 20 minutes in the tanning bed is a good one for like two hours in the sun. Final lesson is uh, just kind of a fun activity about financial wellness. Uh, how to, since lots of parents, at least my parents, grew up in an age where um, you didn't have to worry about retirement. You know, the company you work for would take care of you, and that is not the case anymore. So uh, the purpose of this lesson would be making children or making the kids aware of this. And um, the whole thing behind this is. Uh, if you save $1,000 a year from the time that you're 18 to 24, by the time you're 50 years old, and if you save it in an account that accrues interest, you'll have a million dollars at, I think, 7% interest. And that's kind of the activity. Just use different activities, or do different numbers to see how much money they can make if they continue to add money into it. So. have the activity on the big decision so then watch the video and then talk about how to make the right choice and then the teacher would put you guys into groups um just get into groups where you're at of like three or four and it's fine and yeah so then pass out the scenario and read it <coughs> And talk about with your group if this is a healthy decision or a risky decision, and if it's a bad decision, like how would you change that and do something different to make it a healthier decision? Good decision or bad decision? And if it's um, bad, how could you change it? Um, well, we both agree that it's kind of a bad decision. I guess the scenarios, like all the scenarios, is no, no. Ours is like Jamie goes to a party, there will be drinking. She's supposed to go to the night at her friend's house, but um, so her parents will never find out anyway, but she probably doesn't plan on drinking. So we said it was a bad situation, but we agreed on how to fix it. Like I assume, I'm assuming his way to fix it would be to not go to the party. My way would be to call your parents and ask. If that's something that did happen at the party, then they'd at least be aware of it. <laughs> bad decision. Jamal's friends began, um, began to smoke, and he was concerned. And then he ended up accepting a cigarette. So, yeah. Ours was, um, ours was a good decision. But she stuck to her diet and asked her friends to go to a different restaurant. So she could actually stick to it. Ours was a good decision. Um, some guys wanted 